Okay, we started this problem during the last lecture, and we got to this point where we really hadn't finished it. So let's go ahead and finish this problem up. Let's take a look at the problem, um, and let's take a side view. So we've got this plate, and it's attached at the top by a ball and socket. We'll refer to that point as position A. And then the bullet comes in and embeds itself. The bullet's coming in with some initial velocity, which I'll call V of the bullet, and that strikes a distance H below position A. And I'd like to kind of take a different approach at this, and we'll get the same results, but we'll also be able to do the, the impulse at A. But keep in mind that this is the situation beforehand, so we can consider the angular momentum, which is a vector quantity as L1. And previous to the bullet striking the plate, that angular momentum is the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet times that distance h. According to impulse and momentum, what we add to this then is the integral of the moment dt. Now if we keep in mind that, I'm just going to reproduce the plate here, there's no external moment acting on this hanging plate. Now there is a force at A, because if we examine the, the system, the bullets coming in, and A can supply a force in this direction, could be in the opposite direction, but I'll just place it in, in the x direction. Now that could actually give us an impulse, but it would only be a linear impulse if I'm looking at the moments about point A. So let's go ahead and subscript that, the moments about point A. The reason it can't give us a moment about point A, well, first off, it's a ball and socket, and that can't supply a moment. But if we're looking at the moments about point A, the force at A is a distance of zero from point A. So it really can't supply a moment. So that's going to be zero. But there is a force there, and I'm actually going to take advantage of that, because I'm going to look at the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet plus the integral of a dt, and I'll look at that in a little while. But that's the linear impulse, whereas this right here is the angular impulse, and that's what I'm concentrating on here at the beginning. So I have the initial angular momentum, the angular impulse, and this should equal the final angular momentum, and the final angular momentum will be a combination of the bullet so I have the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet after the impact. And then I'm going to have the mass of the plate, which I believe I called big M, times the velocity of the center of gravity of the plate. And since that's after the impact, let's use a U for that. But then there's also going to be a rotation. Even though the rotation is about this point A, I'll draw it as an angular momentum. So that's the moment of inertia about the center of gravity times omega for the plate. So consider this to be angular momentum before the collision, angular impulse, and then angular momentum after the collision. And so if I evaluate this angular momentum, I get the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet times h. And that's going to want to go in the counterclockwise direction, about point A. So let's call that k hat plus 0, because there's no moment at A. And that's going to equal a combination of these three factors, 1, 2, and 3. So that's the mass of the bullet, the new velocity of the bullet, times h. That's in the k hat direction. Now remember, the bullet's embedded in the plate, we'll take advantage of that in a moment, plus the angular inertia, the rotational inertia around the center of gravity times omega, also in the positive k hat direction, plus the mass of the plate, the velocity of the center of gravity of the plate, times r, the radius of the plate, because that's the distance that it is, from the rotation at a, it's also in the k hat direction, and then I can write this as the mass of the bullet, and then 
the velocity of the bullet will be h times omega from the axis of rotation. Right, so that's all inside the parentheses there. Then this h is out there. That's in the k hat direction. Then the plate, the moment of inertia of the plate about its center is 1 fourth m r squared times omega, also in the positive k hat direction, plus m. And then the velocity at the center of gravity will be omega times the radius. So that's r omega times r k hat. And this is the mass of the bullet, h squared omega plus 1 fourth m r squared plus m r squared from this term times omega. All of this in the k hat direction. And of course this term right here is the 5 fourths m r squared that we saw over here in the previous version. So you see that right there. So it's the same equation we had before, but a slightly different way of looking at things. Okay, so let's continue examining this, because remember we want to know what is the impulse at A. But in order to do that, here's the impulse at A, so we're going to want to examine linear momentum in this case. So I have the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet plus the integral of A dt and that's going to equal the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet after the collision plus the mass of the plate times the velocity of the center of gravity of the plate. That's the total momentum of the system. Mass of the bullet times its speed all to the right plus the mass of the plate times the center of gravity's speed. Oh, and I should label that with a u since it's the velocity afterward. And so I can write the integral of a dt equals the mass of the bullet. But remember that the velocity of the bullet is h times omega plus the mass of the plate times the velocity of the center of gravity, which is r omega. All of this minus mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet previous to the collision taking place. And what we were interested in was the average force at point A, but that's going to equal the integral of A dt divided by the time period through which this collision took place. And you may recall that was a given value. Okay, so here's the time period, 1.1 milliseconds, so that's a given value. And so this would equal the mass of the bullet times h plus the mass of the plate times r all times omega, which we know from the previous page on angular momentum, minus the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet before the collision, which we also know, all over delta t, which we know. So everything on the right-hand side of this equation is either given at the beginning of the problem or, in the case of omega, solved in the previous part. And again, if we look at the omega on this page, here is our unknown. We know everything on this left-hand side. We know the mass of the bullet and the height. We know the mass of the plate and the radius. So the only thing not known in this side is omega. And so since we know the left side and everything but omega on the right side, we could solve and say the mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet times h, all divided by the mass of the bullet times h squared plus 5 fourths the mass of the plate times r squared. All of that's equal to omega. And it's always worth looking at a unit check. And I've got mass times length squared in the denominator. Mass times length over time times length in the numerator. And that leaves me with units of 1 over time, which are the units for omega. So at least my unit check is going to confirm my results. Now, support my results is probably a better term. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. This will use conservation of angular momentum. You can pause this and take a moment to read this, but the idea here is that I start off with this entire unit at rest. 
All right, so the first thing we know about this, I have an eight pound disc B, and it's attached to the shaft of a motor mounted on plate A. So B, the mass of B times G is equal to eight pounds. And the motor plate shaft unit has a moment of inertia that's given here. And that's the moment of inertia with respect to this shaft here at C. So this entire system consists of two parts. I've got a plate B and then a motor, which is right here, shaft, which is C here, plate A, which has a moment of inertia about C as 0 0.14 pound feet second squared. Because remember that the pound is a slug feet per second squared. And so I multiply that by feet times second squared. And the second squared cancel, and I'm left with slug feet squared. The moment of inertia of the plate is in slug feet squared. So pound feet times second squared is just another way of, of writing the same thing. So consider the system to be two parts the motor shaft in plate A, and then plate B. Now the system starts from rest, so L1 for the entire system is equal to zero, for the entire system. Then the motor begins to speed up. Now what that's going to do is it's going to cause a rotation for B. But since the total angular momentum of the system is zero, the whole system is going to begin to spin. Everything is internal. So when I look at the integral of the moments dt, that's equal to zero, because the only moment is caused by the motor, but that's internal to my two-part system. OK, so I know what the final omega is for the motor. So I can say omega, that's going to be 360 rotations per minute, which is 720 pi radians per 60 seconds. Or so this is 12 pi radians per second. So what is the net angular momentum of my system after the motor's gotten up to speed? Previous to the motor coming up to speed, I have L1 plus the integral of m dt. But keep in mind, this is all 0. So that has to equal L2. But the total momentum total angular momentum of the system is going to be equal to I about the shaft about the shaft C times omega. Let's count that as just the, the motor, the big plate, and the shaft, plus I of the smaller plate. And the smaller plate was B but it's actually got two spins going with it. So we'll call that B about its own center. So we'll call that G, the center of gravity. And that's going to have an omega. And this is going to be 12 pi radians per second. But then keep in mind, let's take a look at this figure again. This is rotating in the clockwise direction. Plate A has to counter that and rotate in the counterclockwise direction. But B is rotating about its central axis in this direction. But it's also traveling with plate A about C. So I need to know the moment of inertia of B about shaft C. So we'll call that I of B about C. And that's going to be times the same omega as I have over here. So let's call this omega of the motor. And this will be omega of A. That's also omega of A. But omega of plate B about the center is 1 half the mass of B times the radius of B squared. That's the moment of inertia about the center of gravity, which is also this value right here. So 1 half the mass of plate B times its radius squared 
but then this is going about c, so I have to add m times d squared to that. So I'm going to have 0.14 slug feet squared, 0 0.14 slug feet squared, times omega about shaft c for plate a, plus 1 half 8 pounds over G, and its radius is 4.5 inches, so 4.5 over 12 feet squared times 12 pi radians per second, but that's going to be clockwise, so this is actually negative, then plus 1 half 8 pounds over G 4.5 over 12 feet squared plus 8 pounds over G and then D D is the distance from here to here which is given at four and a half inches again so the same as the radius of the plate so 4.5 over 12 feet squared and all of this is times omega of a. So the only thing I don't know is omega of a, and all of that's equal to zero, so I can solve that out, and my problem will be done. Alright, last problem. This is a collision problem again, so similar to the hanging plate, only now I've got a sphere a, so the mass of a is given as two kilograms and is moving to the right, so the velocity of A is equal to 10 meters per second. And I'm going to call that the I direction. So X is in this direction, Y is in that direction. And it strikes a 4 kilogram bar, so the mass of the bar B is 4 kilograms, and it's a slender bar, which means the moment of inertia of B about its center of gravity, about its center of gravity, is 1 12th. 4 kilograms times 1 meter squared. So it strikes that bar and it's got a coefficient of restitution of 0 0.6. So it's going to hit the bar and then bounce off. It's going to hit the bar and bounce off. Now we can assume that this is all taking place in a horizontal plane. Maybe it's on a frictionless surface like an ice rink. You can say it's all hanging. It doesn't really matter because all of this takes place instantaneously, so gravity isn't really doing anything as far as an external force goes. So we're interested in the velocity of the sphere and the angular velocity of the bar after the impact takes place. So let's begin by considering angular momentum. And we'll do the angular momentum about the center of gravity of the bar. So there's G. That's the center of gravity of the bar and we'll call this distance in here h, just using the same notation that we used with the plate problem. So L1 is the initial angular momentum, but that's going to be equal to the mass of A times the velocity of A, and we're going to do L1 about the center of gravity, and so that's going to be times h. And you can see that as far as g is concerned, this is moving in a counterclockwise direction, so this is k hat. Now the angular momentum of the bar previous to the collision is zero, so there's no contribution there for the bar, plus the integral of m about the center of gravity, dt, that's a vector quantity, but there is none. There's no outside forces. The collision between the bar and the ball is going to be internal to the system, so there are no outside forces, so that's zero. And this is going to equal, then, the mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball after the collision times h, and we can assume that's in the k hat direction, plus the moment of inertia of the bar times its omega, and that would also be in the counterclockwise direction, so k hat direction. So if I list my unknowns with this equation right here, I don't know u sub a, and I don't know omega. All right, so I've got one equation so far, and two unknowns. So let's just keep over here the unknowns. The unknowns include 
u sub a and omega. Let's do linear momentum then next. We have the mass of a times v sub a, I know both of those, plus the mass of the bar times zero, because it's not moving before the collision takes place. That's going to equal the mass of b times the velocity of b, that's the center of gravity here, that's the velocity of b moving, plus the sphere a times the velocity of a. So I've added a second equation, but I've also added a third unknown, u sub b. So here's equation two, here's equation number one. And I'm going to add a third equation, and this comes from the coefficient of restitution. Now the coefficient of restitution says e is equal to the velocities after over the velocities before. Now before, I've got the velocity of a minus zero, because again, the bar is not moving before. But afterward, I need to look at the velocity of this point, because this is where a comes in strikes the bar and then bounces off. This is the point where the coefficient of restitution has to be examined. So this is going to be, I'm going to call it u sub b, but I'm going to re-examine u sub b here in just a minute, minus u sub a. But we really need to look at u sub b because there's two things taking place here. Okay, let me actually call it u sub b prime because it's not this u b. How fast is this piece right here moving away? Well, you can keep in mind that the bar is going to begin to rotate. And so that rotation says the speed here with respect to point G, so if I call this point C, the velocity at C with respect to G is equal to omega cross the position of C with respect to G. I called this distance before, I called that h. And so that velocity is equal to h times omega. Now that's the velocity of c with respect to g. But then g is also moving. And so what I have to count here then is the velocity of g. And so this is going to be the velocity of g, which I've called the velocity of b plus h omega. This is how fast the speed at c is going away. That's the important thing for restitution, the collision at that location. The location of the collision, how fast is that piece moving? So then I subtract a, the velocity of a afterward, and then the velocity of a before goes in the denominator. So equation number three has not added in any unknowns. So I have 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second times 0 0.25 meters. All right, so from the center of mass, since it's a uniform bar, this is a half a meter. This is also half a meter, but then this little bit in here that I called h is a quarter of a meter because that's what it is here. So that's going to equal 2 kilograms times u sub a, which I don't know, times a quarter of a meter, plus 1 twelfth m, which is 4 kilograms, times 1 meter squared, times omega. So there's my first equation. And then momentum was 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second. That's all in the positive i direction. That will equal 2 kilograms times u sub a plus 4 kilograms times u sub b. So there's my second equation. And finally, restitution. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my v sub a, which is 10 meters per second, to the left-hand side. So I get 0 0.6 times 10 meters per second equals u sub b plus omega times a quarter of a meter. That's the velocity of b minus u sub a. And so there's my system of three equations and three unknowns. And if I did all that correctly, I should have a u sub a 
equal to 1.47 meters per second and an omega that's for the bar of 12.8 radians per second or if I set my equations up I would get 2 kilograms times a quarter of a meter so that's going to be one half u sub a plus one third omega and all of that will equal five so here's one third omega there's going to be my five and then the next equation is two u sub a plus four u sub b equals twenty and finally I have minus u sub a plus one fourth omega plus u sub b equals six and then also u sub b equals four point two seven meters per second notice u sub a is positive which means even though it strikes the bar and bounces off it continues to move forward just at a lower velocity it's not moving to the left still moving to the right. Okay, and that ends that problem. Please let me know if you have any questions.